the Springfield Armory 1911 DS Prodigy. Let's check it out. Springfield Armory has just introduced their 1911 DS Prodigy. Uh, this is a double stack 9mm, holds 17 plus 1. It also comes with a 20 round magazine and also available is a 26 round magazine. Uh, this has the polymer grip with the steel frame and steel slide, bull barrel, optics ready, really in line with the STI or the Staccato 2011s. Uh, and this is Springfield Armory's first in this line. It's not just an all steel frame double stack. This is a very handy, very pointable firearm. And because of that polymer grip, it makes it fairly lightweight for this size. It is in nine millimeter, but again, 16 plus one or 20 plus one make this a very capable firearm. Whether you're a competitive shooter or you want something for home defense for that bump in the night, this will make it very compatible. Also has an accessory rail. We're going to take a look at this pistol, but it has just been released. And guys, I've been looking at the 2011s for a little while. Uh, the Staccatos, those things are really expensive. And yet, you're coming in with a Springfield Armory that is considerably less. And yet, after going through all the quality, this thing is solid. Now we really appreciate Springfield Armory for including us in the launch and we really wanted to bring this out to you but guys honestly again I've been looking for a 2011 style pistol and man Springfield Armory has really hit the nail on the head. Now guys for over 110 years the 1911 has been very popular here in the U.S. and it has gone through a number of different changes and it's really a lot of upgrades that are needed to bring it up to the 21st century. And one of the biggest changes has been the 2011 design. STI designed a pistol that has a polymer grip, and it allows for your double stack magazines. Uh, here we have the Springfield Armory, and this is what they call the 1911 DS for double stack, and it's the Prodigy. And this is something that I've never seen from Springfield Armory. They make really high quality 1911s, but they have really upped their game with this pistol. And guys, again, I have honestly been contemplating getting a 2011, and then all of a sudden Springfield Armory brings this out. I was really excited about it because I'm a big fan of 1911s, but let's face it, guys, they're single stack. And, you know, your limited round capacity. Uh, with 9mm, typically 9 to 10 rounds. Here we have 17 plus 1, and then it has a magazine that'll go up to 20 plus 1 that's included with the pistol, and then they're offering a 26 round magazine. And this gun really is geared toward competitive shooters. I mean, especially guys that like to shoot the 1911s. One of the big things about 1911 is the trigger pull. It's just world class, it's hard to beat. I mean, it's that single action pull and they are known for being exceptional triggers. And so a lot of competitive shooters like that. But also, if for a home defense firearm, I mean, you've got 17 plus one, I mean, this makes an excellent option, and it's a full-size gun. Let's go ahead and make sure that the gun is unloaded. We're gonna drop our 17 round magazine. It also comes with a 20 round magazine. Uh, and then we're gonna check the chamber, and the gun is empty. Now, one of the big things about a lot of 1911s, especially competitive 1911s, is you have a pretty large mag well down here. It just facilitates the ease of magazines going in and out. But if you'll notice, there is no uh, bevel on this mag well. Of course, it's large. 
And then you have this really nice taper on the magazine. And so it goes straight in, really simple. Uh, you do have some cuts in the front and the back. So if you come in this way, it just funnels the magazine right inside. And so it just makes it really easy. This magazine is very well made. I mean, it's got a beautiful finish to it. It has witness holes for 17 and, of course, down to 20. And here we have Duramag, made in the USA, and then, of course, the Springfield Army logo. But with the 20-round magazine, again, same difference. It just slides right in there, and it does have this extended base plate. And then the mag release, of course, it just pops them out. Uh, you have a kind of a standard shape, 1911 magazine. Now, one of the things about these 2011s, or this kind of style... Now, of course, you have your standard 1911 slide. It is forged steel, uh, and then we have a forged frame. It takes all 1911 parts. Your standard 1911 parts work in this pistol, except for the trigger. And one of the reasons why is because the trigger bow has to go around the magazine, and it can't go around a double stack mag. And so a lot of these were designed originally with this polymer grip. Uh, and this allowed for you to change out your grip if you wanted, but it also allows for that double stack magazine and it reduces the weight. And really reducing the weight is the biggest part. But now a lot of times you'll see really large uh, mag wells. Uh, and one of the things about this pistol, and I'm going to kind of pull this out, it has no bevel on the sides. Only on the back and a little bit at the front. But you have your funnel right here. I mean, look at the magazine, how it tapers down to about the size of a standard single stack 1911 mag. But when you're putting it in, it just goes in extremely easy. And it doesn't matter which direction you're pulling it in. It's just going to fit into that giant hole at the bottom. But now one of the things about this grip, though, it's not too thick. Uh, this is probably the same size as a Beretta M9. Uh, it's got just a little bit. In fact, it's probably with thin grips. So it's really not very difficult to grab. Definitely a lot smaller than your Glock 21 or some of the other more larger polymer frame striker fire pistols. And to be honest, because I have medium hands, this feels really good in my hand. But the texturing on here is called the 360 degree adaptive grip. And you'll notice, I mean, except for the mainspring housing, which is steel, but it has really nice tight checkering. There is texturing all the way around it. And so you're able to get a good solid grip on it. It holds, it's not too aggressive to the touch, but when you grab it and you lock down, it gives you a good solid grip. The black Cerakote finish all the way throughout, it's kind of a matte finish, it looks really smooth. And uh, you can see the machining on the Springfield Armories is always really nice. Uh, but it also has a five inch bull barrel and i'm gonna tell you man that is one more barrel coming out the end it has a full length guide rod we'll really look at that when we break the pistol down uh, when it comes to the red dot now you can order this gun with the hex dragonfly optic and this is a three and a half moa 16 hour auto shut off it's 60 61 t6 aluminum and I'll tell you guys, these sights, I love the way they have these angles because that's one of the problems with red dots is if you drop it straight on like concrete and it's just the dome, it can crack the lens. And this is going to give you better protection with these angles. But the sights are suppressor height sights and they do co-witness with the sight. So you just line up your sights with that red dot and then it allows you to be right on target. So even if for some reason the sight goes out, you'll be able to have that back up. It has a five slot Picatinny rail, which gives you a lot of options. In fact, I've got one of the Surefire X300 Ultras, uh, and this is one of their newer lights. It has over a thousand lumens, and I really like these little toggles. So this, either way, I mean, whether you're doing it with your thumb, it's either way it goes that way. And actually, Springfield Armory sent the Surefire to go on here to demonstrate it. But of course, Surefire is known for really high quality used by military and law enforcement all over the world. Now, our uh, safeties are ambidextrous. Uh, we have our slide stop here, very nicely checkered. Uh, and then with the extended safety, you're able to use that as a gas pedal to be able to bring your thumb over when you're firing. And it helps you just to mitigate the recoil. Has a skeletonized hammer, really nice high-ride beaver tail with memory notch. It's 
one of those things about the 1911, it allows you to get your hand way up on the pistol. And guys, I'll tell you, man, I just love the 1911. The trigger, the balance is just excellent. And you're not losing it with this pistol, even though you have that much thicker grip. The trigger is skeletonized, it has serrations on the front, and it does have a trigger stop. And also with these U-notch sights in the back, and they're serrated, and then here on the front we have a fiber optic that's dovetailed in. And Springfield Armory puts these on their pistols, a lot of their different pistols, and I'll tell you, that is a great sight picture. But right here you can see where the frame ends and then where the polymer begins. Trigger guard has that same texturing on it that the rest of the grip has, it comes up and then it has a nice undercut. Now it has front cocking serrations, really easy for press checks. Uh, there is a loaded chamber indicator right here in the top. And then of course you have your rear uh, cocking serrations. And I mean, with that nine millimeter, the recoil spring, I mean, it is a very soft pull back, really easy. Now, one of the reasons why the 1911 is still so popular is it's a very safe gun to carry. And one of the things that if you go ahead and load up your magazine, Enter it into the magwell, rack your slide, enter a fresh round. Uh, now it's ready to fire. You pull the trigger, it's going to fire. Engage your safety, and now you have what is called cocked and locked. And this is a safe way to carry. One of the big reasons is because of this grip safety. Unless this grip safety is depressed, the gun won't fire, even with the safety off. So I'm going to pull the trigger. There's no action with the hammer. Engage that safety with a grip, and now it'll fire. So it really gives you that added safety feature of your frame safety and the grip safety. And that was part of what the U.S. military required back in 1911. Now also, with single action, you can hit the trigger, and with the hammer down, it's not going to actuate the trigger. So it has to trip the sear. And so with the hammer in the rear position, obviously, it'll fire, and then subsequent shots... In this case, 17 plus 1. Now I wanted to bring out a standard 1911 uh, just to let you see the difference between the two. Uh, this is one of the Springfield Armory Ronins. It's actually in 10 millimeter, but it's all the same size as your standard 1911. Uh, you know, one of the big things is the frame. And the frame's all stainless here. It goes all the way down uh, through the magwell. Uh, and again, here we have the polymer grip. Right here, of course, with the accessory rail, it's going to be a little thicker here as well. Uh, and it's just some different styling, but a lot of different 1911s. The sky's the limit on all the different type slide serrations and different configurations. But here is really a big change. I mean, while you have your 1911 grip, which is really thin, just a little thicker with the 1911 DS, just gives it a little more thickness. But guys, to be honest, I mean, it is thicker but this still is very comfortable in your hand. And you have 17 plus one compared to 10 plus one. But all the other features are very similar. Uh, and again, all the parts of your standard 1911 will fit on the 1911 DS, except for, again, just the trigger. Even down to the mainspring housing, the beaver tail, I mean, it's all 1911 parts. And guys, this is a beautiful pistol. Now, one of the things, again, that a 1911 is known for is its trigger pull. We're going to go ahead and pull the hammer back. I'm going to engage the grip safety. Just a tiny bit of take up right here. And then a really crisp break. Reset. Right there. I mean, it is super fast reset. And again, that is just what 1911s are known for, and they can be tuned to be even better, and this one has been tuned. This is really an exceptional trigger. We're going to check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman Trigger Gauge from Brownells. 4 pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. 4 pounds, 4.4 .4 ounces. Weight on the Springfield Armory Prodigy. 2 pounds, 9.2 ounces. Weight on the Springfield Armory Ronin, two pounds, seven ounces. Guys, even though this is a much larger pistol because of that polymer frame, it only weighs two ounces more, and a lot of that is probably the red dot sight. Now we really appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA, one of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And we also thank Lula Loaders for saving our thumbs especially these big magazines. 
20 rounds. That's a thumb saver. Well, got to shot them off. Sorry. Sorry. Right. I'll go load a mag. I was just having too much fun. Guys, I'll tell you, man, this thing is so soft shooting because it's nine millimeter, but yet it's that big frame. Man, it just tracks so well. Um, I just took that uh, 20 round magazine. I'd shot one round before, so I had 19 rounds. Just shot through it. I just couldn't stop. I mean, just such a sweet gun. And then with that hex dragonfly, I mean, it lines up directly with the sights and I can co-witness with the sights. Grip. Thick grip, but yet ergonomic. I mean, just fits in your hand nice. Of course, obviously with Robbie shooting it, this is going home for him. Uh, he used to build STIs, uh, still does, builds STI pistols. And uh, so when I told him about this one, he was very excited. And uh, and I'll tell you, it's I'm very excited. Of course, I love guns, so I'm always excited when I get to go to the range. <laughs> So I was pretty excited about getting down to the range. I told Robbie I was going. He came over <laughs> very quickly because he is a huge fan of the 2011 style pistols. And, you know, he's been building them for over 20 years, the STIs, and really wanted to see what Springfield Armory offered. First off, no malfunctions whatsoever. I mean, it just ran. One thing that we did notice was that the ejection pattern was like almost perfect in sync. Uh, you'd fire rapid strings and they would just all be right there together in a line. It's pretty impressive. Uh, that means the extractor is really tuned well, the ejector, and so it just puts those shells right there in one spot. The handling, the grip, uh, it's not too fat. I mean, and you would think with a double stack mag like this, but it's just very ergonomic. And a lot of that has to do with the polymer. They just got it down to a manageable size. The cocking serrations, excellent. I mean, they're, they're full. Uh, they're deep and it makes it really easy to be able just to, to rack the slide or again to you know press check the hex dragonfly i mean it came sighted in it was spot on it was funny when we were doing accuracy robbie asked me if i was going for the sights or the red dot and i told him i said both i said they're so in line just the feel and the handling of this gun it's just sweet and in nine millimeter it makes it really smooth and one of the big things is you've got guide rails that run or your slide rails that run all the way down and so it just has a good slide to frame fit we used one of the surefire x300 ultras thousand lumens this is one of their new lights and that fits on here very nicely uh, and because of that long accessory rail i mean it comes out right to the end so it doesn't hang off uh, but these just work really well. I mean, Surefire's been making great products for a long time. They also sent a holster system. Now we have a Black Point holster, uh, and it's made for the Surefire X300 Ultra. A thousand lumen light, it's great light. Uh, and we're just gonna be testing the holster. Also, I'm wearing a belt from Ronin, and a uh, tactical belt with the liner inside. Overall, we were very excited. Again, Robbie is a big fan of these pistols and he was very impressed as well. Now for disassembly. Uh, we're going to need a 5.30 seconds hex wrench and this is included. So we're going to drop our magazine, go ahead and double check the chamber, uh, go ahead and bring it back into slide stop. So just engage your slide stop into the slide, take your hex wrench right here on the end, this is your full length guide rod. So we take it and then we just turn it. And we're not going to turn it a whole lot, we're just going to kind of loosen it up. You don't want to completely uh, disassemble your guide rod and then we're going to take and hit our uh, slide stop and come down to the notch right here in the slide and really because of the built-up area right here uh, I'm going to take this wrench and just go ahead and push out my slide stop and then let your slide go forward really easily it's still under spring tension 
Now take your recoil spring and put your hand over it and then just go ahead and start turning. And this is a two-piece guide rod. And so we're just going to unscrew it and then we're going to bring it out. I mean, that is a, a nice guide rod. Now here, we're going to release the other piece of our guide rod and the spring, just go ahead and pull it right out. And then we have a sleeve right here we pull out. So really it's a three-piece guide rod. Of course, this spring just comes right off and you can see where the threads are that's going to fit all this back together. Take your barrel, drop your barrel link, and just push it out the front. And the barrel just slides right out. I mean, look at this barrel. <laughs> that is incredible. I mean, that bull barrel is its just going to give you solid lockup to the slide. And it does have an 11 degree crown, and that's going to protect the lands and grooves in your barrel. But this stainless steel, all forged barrel, man, this thing is beautiful. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip. Uh, we'll take a look at the interior though. I mean, look at that dust cover. It is just large and in charge. Nice rails. I mean, it's just really a quality piece inside and out. Then here with the slide, very well done. Of course, no tooling marks. Uh, this is just a beautiful 1911. 1911 DS. <laughs> Now to remove the grip shell, there are two screws on either side, and then there's two screws here that hold the trigger guard in, and then you're going to need to remove your safety, and then this will pull off. Uh, I started to demonstrate it, but it's not listed in the owner's manual, so we're just going to leave it on here for this review. But there's not really any reason to take it off. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip. Uh, for reassembly, we're going to drop in our barrel. We're going to put it from the front of the slide first. Go ahead and bring up your barrel link. Next, we're gonna take our first part of our sleeve or the middle of the guide rod. It's just really a sleeve that fits right in here in the guide rod channel. And you wanna make sure that little lip is on the outside and it'll just fit in just like that. Next, you wanna take the back part of your guide rod, put it on your recoil spring. But first, we're gonna take the front end of the guide rod and we're gonna go ahead and place it in here. And this is gonna help guide the spring. And so we're gonna go ahead and get it in place and then just go ahead and compress your spring. Gotta make sure our barrel link stays in the up position. And you wanna hold pressure onto this. Then just start your recoil spring by hand by turning it and it's going to give it some tension and it's going to take some of the spring out of that spring. It'll get to a certain point. You just want to hold it. And then we're just going to tighten it up. Go ahead and hold tension on it. Put it back over your slide. Now we want to take this little crescent notch and we want to line it up back here where we're going to put in our slide stop. Take your slide stop, go ahead and enter it in, and give yourself enough clearance to get over the polymer grip. And then just take and get past that little detent and pop it into place. Just like that. And it'll snap in, and you want to make sure that it is flush with the outside of your frame. Now just go ahead and release the slide. And then we're going to tighten down our guide rod. That's all you need to do. A little different but if you start breaking down some 1911s, it doesn't take long to get used to it. Now this comes with the hex optics mount, but you can get different mounts from Springfield Armory to whatever red dot you're using. Now it has the rear sight retained. Springfield Armory includes the cover plate with a sight already attached. And so this has the sight with the red dot, and then you can have your sight without the red dot. And this is dovetailed in, so you could actually change this rear sight out if you wanted. But this is all metal, and man, it has some weight to it. <laughs> Even with this X300 Ultra, which is a pretty big light, uh, it really fits onto this pistol very well. Now, Black Point holsters did send this holster to go with it. And Black Point makes a lot of different holsters for a number of different light setups. And so we also have the tech lock on the back so we can attach this. And we're going to be using this at the range. And guys, this really makes a great holster option. And also, Black Point Tactical makes holsters also for the Olight series. So if you have an Olight, you're looking for a holster, Black Point Tactical is a great resource. 
Now the MSRP on the Prodigy, $1,499. If you get the Hex Optic Dragonfly, it retails for $1,699. If you're looking at the Staccato with the optics cuts, it's $23.99. I mean, this really brings the price down. And honestly, with all these features, I mean, it is a very competitive handgun to the Staccato. Now, the Staccato is a great gun. I mean, it is premium and it is getting rave reviews. But the Springfield Armory Prodigy is coming in and it's giving you all the same features. As far as pros and cons, it's a large pistol and it's got a thicker grip than your standard 1911. But it's not as thick as some of the double stacks that I've handled. Uh, and that grip shell actually makes it lighter in weight. But yet you're getting that forged slide, forged barrel, forged frame. Uh, gives you really good quality. I love the sights, uh, the U-notch in the back, and the fiber optic at the front. Of course, it is optics ready, which makes it great. And you can go ahead and get it with the hex optic installed. Uh, and get a better price than you would if you paid for them separately. Trigger pull is phenomenal. I mean, it's just excellent. And the recoil mitigation on this, because of the size, the weight, I mean, it is a very soft shooting gun. As far as cons go, it still runs about 1500 bucks MSRP. And so, you know, for most people, that's a little bit excessive. But if you're really looking for that double stack 1911, it's one of the best options out on the market for price. Overall, there's not really any cons if you're looking for this type pistol and the price really helps you kind of go over the edge. And again, a big thanks to Springfield Armory for providing the 1911 DS Prodigy for this review. This thing is a beast. Beauty and the Beast? Nah, probably not. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market and you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. And this thing is ready for action. Uh, ready for action. What kind of action? <laughs> Middle of night action. Wait on the Springfield Prodigy. Prodigy, Prodigy, Prodigy. STI 1911 uh, or 20. Okay. The the wasp. The wasp. Okay, it's not a wasp. Okay. <laughs> it's a hex wasp, and it's a dragonfly. <laughs> Surefire X Ultra 300s. No. I don't know. That's then we're going to bring it back. Okay, no, we're not doing that, are we? No, 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 no. That's not what we do. Because it's still under spring tension.